Nightmare City, let's talk about it. Nightmare City, or as it was known in the States, as City of the Walking Dead, was released in Italy and Germany in 1980 and in the States in 83. Shot on location in Madrid, Spain, and Rome, the film was an Italian production that the likes of Tom Savini enjoys so much that in 2013 he raised fan funds through Fangoria to begin working on a remake. Now, to add to the many reasons people don't really like Savini as a person after getting $130,000 from fans, by 2023, 10 years later, he has not begun production on the film or scrapped it and refunded the funds. But the film itself is sort of a zombie flick. They're not really zombies, but men going insane after being infected by some mad festus radiation. It drives these men to go kill and feast on blood. The nuclear radiation makes their cells super dense, but they need red blood cells because the radiation destroys it or something the film also sets up the idea that they must be shot in the head to be stopped killing the brain but after this revelation everyone who's perfect to that knowledge doesn't really aim for the head and the lead who wouldn't know this only shoots for the head over and over and over again basically we follow a reporter who meets this professor as he lands at the airport in this military plane that ate up a big chunk of the budget he lands and unloads these radiant zombies onto the city mowing through police and the military the city goes into a state of emergency and the government kind of does nothing to help the people for some reason we also follow Major Warren, who left his wife at home locked up, and the general, who tries to reach to his daughter and his son-in-law. Spoiler alert, both these families die in a way to fill screen time and boost the kill count, but there's some good deaths here, so I'm not really complaining. A harpoon kill's always fun, and one chick gets her eye pulled out, so, you know, that's cool, I guess. The reporter, Dean Miller, escapes the madness and makes it to the hospital where his wife works at trying to save her. The hospital's invaded and we get a litany of kills. The kill count is a nightmare. It radiates everywhere, ripping into everyone. They find some blood supplies and the doctor throws a damn scalpel into one like it's a dagger. It's kind of a shame it does nothing and this poor dude dies after that impressive-ass throw. We also get a lot of groovy murder music. We get some head explosions and even a cut off titty. He finds his wife, they escape the hospital, and aimlessly maneuver through the town for the duration of the film. I think the second and third act of the movie have, you know, a, a problem where they lack a sense of direction. They go into the house that's radiated, they just leave it or die. And that's really kind of it. The general finds more people he knows dead, he goes into a helicopter, comes back, and more people just die. There's no end goal here or mission statement for the military group, and the Millers, they just want to survive. Eventually, they all end up at an amusement park where the Miller starts off with some head pops, knocking heads back, honoring Al Snow, before Major Warren flies overhead with a helicopter and tries to pick them up. A little higher, come on! Oh, a little higher! A little higher! And Miss Miller just falls to her death before... Uh, wait a minute. God damn it, it's a dream cut that ending. I hate these with a passion. Anyway, Groundhog's Day time. We restart at the beginning of the film, but it pauses just before the plane unloads and we're left with a message. Nightmares become reality. What a load of shit. The film sort of just ends because they ran out of money and that was the only ending the filmmakers could think of to fit the budget and still be shocking. I think a better ending would have been, you know, maybe the zombies climb up the rope and crash the copter. Hell, Miller survives after his wife tumbles and he has a second to catch his breath before Return of Living Dead style the city's bombed. Both ideas suck, both took me no time to think of, and both are miles better than the bullshit they pulled. Or hey, what about the gas they talked about five minutes before the movie ends? You ever think about using that? The director of the film cites to have an undertone of an anti-military, anti-nuclear message along with parallels to the AIDS virus and according to him, an element of fantasy, only an element. He also talked in the special feature about the film being miscast, but I can't imagine who he had in mind would have saved this film. Early in the movie, I compared it to 70s Toho films, peak cocaine era for them, the style, music, effects, the actual era it was shot in, it all points to a very house or Matango vibe to me. Nightmare City is usually hated by critics, but the likes of Quentin Tarantino praise the film, and some even consider this to be the first movie with fast zombies or introduce the idea they could only die from being shot in the head. Director Umberto Lenzi has made some foreign classics prior, like Manhunt in the City, and we'll go on to make classics like Eaten Alive, Campbell Ferox, Ghost House, Nightmare Beach, and ones I haven't even seen, like Demons 3. The original Italian version of the film was heavily damaged, but it's available on the Arrow release. It has some minor differences from the English version. It's missing the random line about vampires. Miss Millie talks about it at the church, and it doesn't have some screams at parts, but in case you wanted to watch it, it's there anyway.
One thing I'll say about the film is it's not really a boring one. It keeps rolling, even if it has no reason to other than really to kill time. But at least this movie's killing time is exploding heads and naked women. Unlike other films like The Slayer where fucking nothing happens. Yeah, I'm reviewing that one this year too. Overall, be ready for some goofy radiant, totally not zombies, major douchebag, dance classes on TV, a freaky head sculpt, motorboating, groovy murder music, Groundhog's Day ending, and whatever the hell very B is, and a lot of head popping. You read too many comic books. Whatever you says, Massa. Your wish is my command. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're on already, drop a little subscription down below. Make sure you stay tuned because every day in the month of October, I'm dropping a different horror movie review. Uh, I believe they come at 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then every week, every other week uh, throughout October, there's a bonus comic video still coming up. I still want to make sure there's still some combo content on the channel. And then throughout the rest of the year, there's combo content every single week, one to two times a week. Plus, I do the YouTube shorts where I post stuff on there every day. I got the Instagram. I got the Facebook. I got the, in the Facebook group fans unleashed where you get a behind the scenes look at the the you know, whole channel, everything, Connors Comics, the whole company, all that kind of stuff. So all, all that is linked down in the description below. And again, make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye out for updating daily videos. And uh, until next time, peace.